We've got a lot of trade rumors to talk about on today's show, but make sure to subscribe to the channel before the NFL trade deadline. I don't want you to miss a thing if trades start going down, bullets start flying on Halloween afternoon. So make sure you hit the sub button today. Coming up on today's Broncos breakdown, we've got some interesting rumors to talk about, including Jerry Judy to the Chiefs. Yeah, we'll talk about that. Plus, is Pat Sertan actually on the market? It makes me, it makes my skin crawl thinking about Patrick Sertan being traded, but it is a conversation we do have to have. And we're going to look at some other players that could be available on Denver's roster as they are looking like a potential fire sale going into the trade deadline. But let's start things off with the Jerry Judy segment. So, Bets from odds from Bet Online AG put out some next team odds. And for Jerry Judy, they had the Kansas City Chiefs as the number one next team odds favorite, which is just crazy to think about. So let's talk about this for a second. And let's get some jokes out of the way because we all know the Kansas City Chiefs love doing it. absolutely nothing for the most part. And they made their one wide receiver trade, right? They brought Miko Hardman back from New York. So I don't know if it's in Beach's blood to make two trades in two months or in two weeks, actually. That seems like pushing the envelope for him. But in all seriousness, the elephant in the room is the Denver Broncos and the Kansas City Chiefs are not going to make a trade, right? I'm like 99% certain. But then last year, we had TJ Hawkinson get traded from the Lions to the Vikings. So we already saw one interdivision trade for a skilled player go down. I guess it's not impossible for a second one to happen, but it is extremely unlikely. I'm not going to say 0% chance, but definitely unlikely. Like, if you're Denver and you're looking at Jerry Judy's numbers and well, you're just looking at the practice field, the tape, and all that good stuff, maybe you think to yourself, we know who Jerry Judy is as a player. So if we could get a pick from the Chiefs, that's one less draft asset they have in 2024, and give them a player we believe is not good, I guess that would be a win-win for Denver, right? You're improving your own team. You're improving your own situation by getting a draft pick from your rival of all places. So that's always good. The Chiefs have one less pick. And you're giving the Chiefs a player they think is good, but you don't believe is good, and you have that experience of watching him for four years. However, you run a horrible risk of if Jerry Judy is good in Kansas City. Man, oh, man, oh, man. You'll never live it down. You'll never hear the end of it if Jerry Judy is helping Patrick Mahomes win another Super Bowl. So I have my reservations. I have my fears about just the memes and potentially and what the internet will do to Denver if Jerry Judy and Patrick Mahomes go off for a beautiful career together. But if Judy sucks in KC, well, Denver is the big winner. They get a pick from the Chiefs and... They get on, they move on from Jerry Judy, and the Chiefs don't get much out of number 10. So there is a very dramatic uh, ending that could happen. Either really good or really bad. But I don't think there's going to be any sort of in-between if Judy really does get dealt to, the, to their AFC West rival. Now, be honest with me, though. Would you trade Jerry Judy for a second? Right now, ignore the team, whether it's Chiefs, anyone. I don't care. If you were George and Sean Payton. Actually, you're not George. You're Sean Payton. Sean's calling the shots right now. Would you do Judy for a second? Yes or no? All right, next up on the show, we are going to talk about the latest buzz on Patrick Sertan and what is going on with Denver's star cornerback going into the NFL trade deadline. But really quickly, a word from our friends over at Prize Picks. That's where support for today's show is coming in from. And Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports app where all you have to do is pick more or less for two to six player stat projections and you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. So for this upcoming weekend, I'm taking the more on C.J. Stroud, 239.5 passing yards against the Panthers. Carolina's defense is trash. Trevor Lawrence, more than 239.5 passing yards as well against the Steelers. I just don't respect Pittsburgh's defense outside T.J. Watt very much. And then I like Brees Hall more than 66.5 rushing yards. He was awesome against the Broncos, so I have no reason to believe he would go less than 66.5 rushing yards this upcoming week against the Giants defense. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and use code CLNS 
for a first deposit match up to $100, and you can ride with my selections, you can fade my selections, but the link for that is in the comments and description of today's video, Prize Picks, Daily Fantasy Sports Made Easy. I want to share a quick quote from an Albert Breer article over on Sports Illustrated right now. He says, I do think Denver will undergo a more thorough retooling with Peyton captaining all of it, which is why, which, which is why the Broncos are going to listen to trade inquiries on Judy, Sutton, Bowles, Jewel, Simmons, and even Patrick Sertan over the next six days. The Broncos aren't close. They need picks, and it makes sense exploring getting more. You can have literally everyone that he just listed except for Patrick Sertan. I'm not even awesome. I'm not even fully on board with trading Garrett Bowles, but no. No, 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 no. No trading of Patrick Sertan the second. That I will never let my brain comprehend. Because you know what you don't do for a team that's trying to rebuild? Trade an all-pro 23-year-old cornerback. That's really the whole video right there. Don't trade an all-pro 23-year-old cornerback in year three of his career. End of the video. See you guys tomorrow. Right? If you are going to trade Patrick, Patrick Sertan, it would be a massive haul coming back to Denver. At least two first-rounders and a starter in my book. That has to be the beginning of the conversation. If it's anything less than that, you hang up and laugh. And you shouldn't even take the call in the first place. But if you do want to know what it would cost to get Patrick Sertan, that would be my asking price if I am Sean Payton. Because you do not trade building blocks in a rebuild. You build around building blocks, right? You trade guys like Jerry Judy, Cortland Sutton, and Justin Simmons, a bit older players, to get more lottery tickets. Because that's all the draft is. The draft is a glorified lottery. There's just less tickets, right? It's just not one in a bazillion chance, but it's still a 1 in 32 chance of getting a good player in the first round. And that's still not great odds. Like, it's always going to be a lottery. But to your average fan, the draft brings hope. It brings possibility. It's a new frontier. It's going west. It's unknown. It could be better, or they could be worse. But I know this much. Patrick Sertan is awesome. So would you rather have what's behind door number three, which could be good, could be bad, could somehow be better. There's a very remote chance, but there is a chance. Or would you like to stay put with the safe bet? And that is an all-pro player in year three. And he's only 23 years old. I don't think door number three is going to have anything better than that. There's a 1 in a 99% chance that happens. 1 in 99 chance. Not happen. Not interested. Pass. But I do understand there is a fraction of people out there that somehow believe trading Patrick Sertan is a good idea. So for you sick fucks, I will come up with three trade ideas. Cowboys call Dallas, looking to replace Trayvon Diggs for Patrick Sertan. And in return, two first-rounders and Deron Bland, their starting cornerback. So at least Denver has a starting, like a jumping-off point at corner to replace Pat Sertan. You don't want that one? Okay, how about this one? The Bills call Denver because they just lost to Davius White. Same thing, two first-rounders and A.J. Epinesa, no, AJ Epinesa, excuse me, their edge rusher. Because Denver needs help at edge. So that's an idea. Or if you want to get a little frisky, how about this one? Denver and Detroit make a deal. First rounder to the Broncos, just one. And their left tackle, Panay Sewell, in exchange for a third round pick and Pat Sertan. Now that one's a bit more unique than the other two, of course, because you only have one first rounder going to Denver. But you also get a star left tackle. So if you wanted to trade Garrett Bowles, you have his replacement already and an improvement, honestly. But you give up a third-round pick, so a good day two draft pick, and Pat Sertan. I don't even know who says yes or no in that trade. If both sides would agree, Detroit loves Panay Sewell, but they sure could use a star cornerback. So if you are in the camp of trade Patrick Sertan, I'm not going to convince you at this point, and I have made so many arguments, I'm going to bore everyone if I repeat the same points of why you should not trade Pat Sertan. So if you are in the camp of trading him, this one's for you, you weirdos, you foot lovers. Which trade would you do? So 
Lions trade, which only gets you one first rounder, but you get a new left tackle and you get uh, you give up a third, or the Bills trade for an edge rusher and two firsts, or the Cowboys trade for two firsts and a new corner. Let me know down in the comment section. That's going to do it for us on today's show. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, I really appreciate those of you that watch all the way until the end of the video. So if you are still watching right now, scroll on down to the comment section. Type me. That way I can get a good idea, a good pulse of the end of the video crew.